Hi there, Aaron Dunn here from the SMSF Academy. In this video, we're going to be looking at the updates we've made to our transfer balance cap commutation documents. So what you can see here in this document is we've now broken this out into two parts. You will have initially needed to have completed the transfer balance cap commutation requirements, whether in full or in part, prior to the 30th of June in accordance with Practical Compliance Guideline 2017-5. Now what we've done here is we've added to this document now because as part of the financial statements when preparing at 30 June, we are now looking at completing an additional set of documents here that will confirm the value of the commutation to comply with the transfer balance cap and then also of course notify the member of that confirmation of the commutation value. You can of course look to use the integration here with both Simple Fund 360 and Class Super and when you have the completed document you can always of course upload that if you use Dropbox or Google Drive. So let's start the process here and there's just a couple of changes that we've made in this process for a full commutation. So I'll put in here uh, the test SMSF uh, we have our address, um, whatever that address will be. And then as we work through it, we are, of course, grabbing the information in respect to the uh, individuals or trustees, the number of individual trustees, where we're having our trustee meeting address. Uh, we'll have uh, John and Jane Smith in this instance. And then as we work through this information, we're going to get to the uh, details of when our meeting has been held, uh, the current member who's being paid that pension will say is John here. Um, and then this is where we're now getting to and looking at the difference in terms of the commutation information. So we have, as we did earlier, have details of what that pension was called because you are running in many instances multiple pensions. So in this instance, we're saying the full commutation is coming from ABP number two. And we may have that notated in the description in either uh, BGL Simple Fund or Simple Fund 360 or Class Super Supermate, whatever the case may be. We'll include information about our rule or clause, whichever one you use, the date of the commutation, which in more, most instances will have been 30 June. Then here is the new bits that we've added. So did the member complete an initial request to commute the pension in accordance with that practical compliance guideline? So if we select yes here, what we're now doing is including information around the end of financial year reporting, which is part of those next steps that the commissioner expect us to do through that practical compliance guideline. So if we say that that commuted amount was say, $157,500 and then we're rolling that back to accumulation phase, saving and reviewing that order uh, so we can check that the information we have is correct and then we would submit this information. So any of our gold and silver members, you can simply push this information through as part of your membership. So that's going to take uh, just a couple of minutes to process and then what I'll do is just pause it here quickly and once that document is generated, I'll show you the completed document. Okay, so we've now generated the order and it's come through as an email which you can see here and also it is available in the downloading of your documents. So we have here the commutation in full of the account based pension. So the first thing you'll note here is that we had an irrevocable request that was initially put in place, previously accepted by the trustees. That was a precondition when we look at PCG 2017-5. What we're now doing here is confirming that value and what that amount is being calculated as and that we've reflected that as having been rolled back to the members accumulation phase. Uh, back on the 30th of June 2017. So in this instance, we then have the following resolutions that are being undertaken in respect to that commutation uh, and then signed off by the chairperson. We then inside the uh, notification to the member, we confirm that that commutation has been completed in order to comply with the transfer balance cap. We confirm what the amount is and again we confirm that that has been completed in the financials and can no later than the due date of the return. Uh, and then if there's any changes, we have put in an important caveat there though, 
you'll note that the initial request to comply could not be altered or revoked. So if there is some level of change, we do need to then obviously explore that further. So that is the what I would call the second set of documents around complying with the introduction of the transfer balance cap. So if you do have any other questions in respect to this documentation, please feel free to get in contact with us and we'll be more than happy to go through it with you. Thank you.